my name is Tina, and I have great gay parents. Not like my two dads gay. I actually had a mom and a dad, but for most of their adult lives, they had partners of the same sex, except for those 10 years where they were married. I actually had a really normal life, and growing up in a gay family isn't what you might think it is. <laughs> I didn't grow up around a lot of gay men in Speedos. I wasn't raised by drag queens. There weren't a lot of posters of Gillian Anderson everywhere. I really had a totally normal life. What happened was, my mom met her partner. Uh, they were together for 13 years. Her name was Elaine. And they decided to have me through artificial insemination. It was awesome. <laughs> and I always called Elaine my Ia because I couldn't pronounce the T in Tia. And I loved it because we had a special relationship with a special name. When I was growing up, they raised me around all of their gay friends, other gay couples, who treated me like their own because they would have never had the opportunity to have a gay family for themselves. They face a lot of obstacles in raising children for gay couples. There are approximately two million LGBT, that's lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender adults that are looking to adopt some of the 500,000 kids in foster care, but most of them go to foreign-born children for adoption because of the obstacles they face in the country. So when I was growing up, I really did have a normal life. I wore a lot of pink, I played with Barbie dolls, and we went on family vacations, and I had dance recitals, and it never weirded me out that I had two moms, and all the kids on TV had mom and a dad. Then when I was five, my mom was introduced to a man named Jamie, and he was totally fabulous. <laughs> and we danced around his apartment to Madonna, and he was the most fun person I'd ever met, and he, though he'd mostly dated men as an adult, he and my mom fell in love, got married, and then they gave me a little sister named Lindsay, who's a total brat. So, my, my gay mom had up and married my gay dad, but they didn't become straight. We were still very much a part of the gay community. We went to gay pride picnics, and it was awesome. So, as I got older, I became more aware of our unique situation, and of course, my parents completely embarrassed me. Who isn't embarrassed by their parents? When I was in high school, my, my girlfriends would tell me how cute my dad was. That was embarrassing. And then, was I teased? Of course I was teased. Look at me, I had terrible hair and bad glasses. I was in drama, it was a nightmare. But the gay parents thing never really came up. So I wasn't really too affected. My parents were together for 10 years and my dad was my absolute best friend. We'd go shopping together, sing Barbara Streisand at the top of our lungs. It was awesome. And he was, but I never saw a football game until I was like maybe 12 or 13 years old. We did watch a lot of tennis though. When my parents got divorced, my dad moved to Florida and started a long-term relationship with a man named Joseph, who I absolutely see as my stepfather. He's a great guy, very supportive of me and my sister, and he cannot wait for my wedding this fall in November. That's right, I'm getting married to a man. So growing up, growing up around all that gay didn't make me gay. Just like growing up with straight parents aren't gonna gu guarantee that you're gonna be straight. So those are just some of the reasons that social workers use not to let gay couples adopt. And the last one, molestation, I mean seriously, seriously. Most molestation cases are attributed to heterosexual adults, so it's really just not even a real cause for alarm. After my parents were together, my Ia didn't really have any rights to me because co-parenting laws in most states require that the couples are married. Not really that possible for most gay couples, especially in the early 80s. So, in, and also in some states like Utah and up until last October, Florida banned gay adoptions altogether. Mississippi is trying to pass legislation that would not recognize gay adoptions that happen in other places. So there's always going to be people there, unlike the rest of us, that are closed-minded, don't recognize that gay couples have, can create loving and wonderful homes for tons of adopted children everywhere. Most kids in the foster system spend an average of three years in the system. And for parents like the couple that you saw on an episode of 30 Days recently, who had a woman spend a month in their home with their four adopted children, one of whom had special needs and flourished, they have to deal with closed-minded bigots. So, go out there and support your alternative families. There's organizations like the Family Equality Council, whose wish, mission is to support families regardless of composition through community support and advocacy. And there's an organization called Collage that support children like me who have parents that are part of the LGBT community, either one or both. So get out there, make a difference, don't be closed-minded, and try to educate those people that maybe are and don't recognize that my family is just as awesome as yours.